Hi there, Pixel Perfect fans. We're here in LA at E3. It's the second day of E3, and we caught up with Peter Molyneux, who's graciously given us a little bit of his free time to tell us what he's thought of the event so far. So thanks for uh, stopping by with us, Peter. No, at all. Pleasure. All right, so let's uh, just start off here. Uh, the first question I wanted to ask you was, you know, overall, how's E3 been treating you so far? I know you've been here on a different kind of mission this year. I mean, it, it's 180 degrees different. You know, normally I'm here locked in some room somewhere doing a demo of a game, you know, over and over again. And this year I've come and I've been a journalist and I've, you know, I get to see the games that are demoed. And that, what an amazing experience that's been. And uh, I've, I've just been kind of blown away just at how much uh, enthusiasm there is in, in journalists for for great games. Oh, well, you guys want us to make great games and I think us game designers think you hate us or something. So, so you know, it's been a genuinely eye-opening experience. That's excellent. Now, let me give you an opportunity that only journalists get to have. If you had to grade the press conferences, who wins? Ah, it's, a, it, it, it's, just, it's a tough one. You know, in a way, I want to give two grades. One for professionalism. I think Microsoft wins on that front. You know, they have their, their sort of military precision of their press conference compared to, you know, the slightly sort of um, flabby Nintendo, you know, in their press conference. It's not quite so military precision. So I give, definitely I would give... Um, uh, uh, Microsoft the uh, uh, high, highest grade on their precision, and then the you know the content and the excitement. And I was disappointed with Nintendo, very disappointed with Nintendo. I thought they were going to come out and show some amazing demos of that Wii U technology, and I I didn't quite get it. I didn't quite buy it. I only because I'm so you know much of a fanboy of what Nintendo does and they they're genius. I just expected too much. I thought you know there were some good thing, interesting things at Sony. There were some good demos at um, at Sony, but you know uh, again it was a little bit messy and uh, there were things I liked and didn't like. Microsoft maybe a little bit too sterile. I mean that's the word I would use. I love Halo. You know I play Halo. I was excited to see it, but you know a little bit sterile. So I probably, you know, give a neck and neck race to to Sony and Microsoft with uh, Nintendo falling behind. Awesome. Well, uh, let's see what's next here. Uh, what uh, on the floor so far? I'm sure you've had time to walk the floor. Anything stand out in particular? Uh, yeah. I mean, the, I I was um, Watch Dogs. I thought, you know, yeah, that was such a surprise. It came from nowhere. You know, it was a simulated city. How could I not love that? But there was one title called Papa and Yo, and uh, it's by this tiny little developer. It's on the Sony stand. It's this amazing, incredible story. This designer has designed a game to, to sort of relive the awful parts of his childhood. And uh, it, what an incredible experience that was. I, mean, I was literally in, almost in floods of tears just watching the demo happen because... You know, this this game design came from was born out of this horrible childhood that this this designer had had, and what an incredible thing that was! That's a game that I've been waiting to get my hands on. I'm gonna have to go check that one out. Uh, now, of course, everyone's wondering: Have you had a chance to go and see Fable: The Journey on the floor over at Xbox? What are your thoughts on that? Since uh, since you walked away, well, not walked away, but you know what I mean. Since you left the uh, the game. Yeah, I went to see it. I, you know, I, I, I stood at the back and, you know, peeked over and watched them. I didn't want to, do, uh, to, to, you know, upset anything. You know, I'm just very proud of those guys. I love them so much and I'm proud that they, you know, f are pulling this game together. It looks, looks pretty cool. Oh, yeah, it does. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I think they are going to do what everyone thought was impossible, and that is prove that core games can be played on Connect. That Connect could be a device that would be as delightful as that restrictive uh, controller. You know, maybe they're going to pull that off. I mean, certainly, you know, the signs look good. We're looking forward to reviewing it when it actually comes out. I'm sure they're terrified on that. <laughs> Uh, uh, well, speaking of Fable and uh, and your venture to a new project, uh, tell us a little bit about Twenty Two Cans Limited. Okay, so um, you know, well, I've started Twenty Two Cans, you know, about ten weeks ago, 
uh, a bit longer, 11 weeks ago, I think now. Um, and um, we've been forming the team. We've had, you know, this amazing number of people uh, apply for jobs because one of the things we wanted to do is bring, you know, not only people that worked in the computer games industry together again, but also a whole new um, forms of people. So, we, you know, if we're going to work on ideas. And now we're working on these things called um, experiments, which we're going to release. They're interesting, interesting interactions, interesting things for us to play around with. And our first one of that is called Curiosity. Um, and it's a, 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 um, a game, if you like. I suppose you could call it a game where, where this cube is set in a white room that you have to tap and try and find out what's in the center of the cube. The whole world will tap on one cube and chip away at that cube to try and find out what inside. We have put something truly amazing in the center of the cube. That's our first experiment. Crazy, insane. It's going to come out in a few weeks' time. But that experiment I find fascinating because it enables tens of thousands of people to do something insanely simple all together, all at the same time. I wonder if it's going to be like a Schrodinger's cat kind of thing, see what's inside the box. You see, you've got the right idea there. Yeah. And speaking of uh, indie games, we'll close out with a question I've been dying to ask you since I found out about it. Peter Molodu on Twitter. Obviously, everybody seems to like all the crazy ideas that he comes up with. Uh, and that led to the Molly Jam, which is like the essence of indie games. A bunch of people taking handed out ideas and developing this crazy stuff. What are your thoughts on that? I don't know if anybody's ever asked you what you thought. I mean, yeah, but I've been asked what I think. I mean, there's a couple of things. The first thing is I've got to give this guy some credit because he is unbelievably witty. He's obviously truly creative. You know, he comes up with an idea a day. You know, I can barely, you know, I can barely eat at the rate he produces these fantastic ideas, a lot of which have made me laugh out loud, that has obviously clearly inspired you know, people to create this event, this Molly Jam set, which was an awesome event. I mean, I went along to the London one. It was just awesome, man. You know, to see people come together and experiment with these ideas well, was just absolutely wonderful. And you know what? I'm going to give him even more credit because I think it was him parodying me that made me realize that I just, you know, what a waste of my life sitting down and letting my wife go by and not going out and being brave and experimenting with ideas because, you know, I think that's what he's saying. He's saying, why are all these games the same? Why, have, you know, why do we work on the same thing over and over again? I love that push that he's doing. Well, excellent. Thank you so much for meeting with us. We really appreciate it.